Hello, everybody. Welcome to Silver Bay Devotional this week. Uh, my name is Garth Allen. I'm the Spiritual Life Director here. Uh, we're glad that you're with us once again. Bruce Tamlin, our chaplain, is here, and Austin, our videographer and technical wizard, is behind the camera. Um, we're grateful for his presence here to help all this come off without a hitch. Um, thank you for being with us. Uh, this week's devotion, uh, we're excited to bring it to you. We're excited that you've uh, made time in your schedule to, to give this your attention. Uh, we do pray that it would be meaningful, that it would be helpful, uh, that it be, would give you a connection to Silver Bay, uh, even in the off season here. It's uh, winter, we're supposed to get some snow tonight, and uh, the, the winter goes on, but we know Silver Bay uh, is still happening. Uh, we're still doing Silver Bay sorts of things, just not swimming or uh, jumping off Diver's Rock or anything like that. Uh, but we're going on. Uh, the work goes forward here. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, we do record these in advance, so not everything will be, uh, we won't comment on all current events or whatever, uh, but we just record them so we can get them edited and get them out uh, in a timely fashion. So thank you for being with us. Uh, Bruce, would you like to say anything? Sure. Uh, again, th thanks for being with us. We have to edit these because there's so many bloopers we have in here that, that no, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> but we do have a lot of fun doing these uh, together and uh, it's really blessed us and we hope it blesses you and hope that you're well at home and that uh, with COVID and, and the pandemic going on that you're safe and that um, and that, that at some point we'll all be uh, together back at Silver Bay uh, in a safe way. And we look forward to that day. But in the meantime, blessings where you are and thanks for being with us. Can I invite you to open in prayer? Sure, I'd be glad to pray. So gracious God, we, uh, we take a few minutes just to still our hearts that we might hear your, your still small voice, Lord, through the gift of the Holy Spirit. You have promised to send us a comforter, somebody to be with us, and that somebody is within each and every one of us. It's the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit within us, Lord, that presence that you have within us, is what comes alive when we have an opportunity to be together in a devotion like this, that, that in the songs we sing or the words we share or the prayers that we pray that we all might feel the presence of that Holy Spirit. So Lord, I'd ask you to be with Garth as he brings uh, our homily and scripture um, uh, to us today that, that, uh, that it might fill our hearts, that we might draw closer to you. For Lord, you are always yearning for us to continue to grow into the women and the men that you've called us to be. And we're all on that journey. That journey is a never ending journey because when we think of, we've arrived, of course we haven't because there's more. Your love, your grace, your forgiveness, and your mercy is just infinite in terms of its capacity to influence our lives. Lord, we ask you to be with those that are watching this um, today, the, 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 the trials and the challenges that they might have before them, health concerns or spiritual concerns or emotional concerns, um, issues around the pandemic. So Lord, we just ask that you be present to all of those that are watching this. Uh, Lord, fill them with your, your spirit. Lord, we give you thanks for all those that are keeping Silver Bay going at this uh, cold uh, time uh, where snow and ice and, and um, deep cold really uh, fill our community, but we're grateful for staff and all of those that keep Silver Bay going. We're grateful, Lord, for the wider community and all of those that are taking care of us through putting groceries on the shelves and, 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 and helping us to keep our vehicles running and all of those that are providing medical care and medical services, all of those that are providing food for those in need. Lord, we're grateful for all of those that are, all those folks that are serving the wider community. Um, Lord, we ask your blessing upon them. So in our time together, Lord, just open up our hearts to you. Help us to know a deep sense of peace and a deep sense of calm, knowing, Lord, that your smooth tenor 
just undergirds our life in a beautiful way. Regardless of what's going on, your presence brings us a sense of hope and a sense of fulfillment and a sense of the abundant life that your son Jesus promised us. So Lord, we give you thanks for this time. We give you thanks for the opportunity to be together in this way. Lord, we just lift up this prayer to you as we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. So as I was thinking about what to speak with you about uh, this during this devotional, um, I, something came up when I met with my spiritual director. Uh, his name is Peter, uh, by the way, and I meet with him every four to six weeks. And uh, for those of you that, that may not know what a spiritual director is, it, it's simply someone who provides a, a listening ear and sort of non-judgmental feedback uh, as you process what's going on in your life and your spiritual journey. Um, at least that's how I define it. Maybe Bruce would have a little bit slightly different definition, but, um, and so Peter has been very helpful to me. And almost every time that we get together, uh, Peter references this story from the end of the Gospel of John where uh, the, it's after Jesus has been crucified and the disciples are in the upper room, uh, they're afraid, and then Jesus comes to them after being resurrected. And when he read it this week, or referenced it uh, this week, I sort of heard something different in it, and it made me want to uh, read it again and think more deeply about it. So I'd like to take us to that passage today so we can uh, look at it. It's in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. Uh, just listen closely uh, to this scene. It should be familiar to some of you, but... Um, maybe you'll hear something new too. John chapter 20. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed, him, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Amen. It's a very interesting sort of short glimpse into this time in the disciples' life right after the resurrection. I just want to sort of break it down and look at each verse or parts of each verse and sort of talk about what it might mean for us. That first verse says that uh, the disciples were locked in this room uh, because they were afraid. And I think if you can just imagine yourself, um, the disciples had followed Jesus for almost three years. They'd been spending pretty much all their time together, living and ministering uh, together. Uh, and they were afraid because the Jewish leaders had had Jesus executed by the Romans, and they feared that that might be the same thing that they were facing. So they were locked away. They, at this time, they weren't sure uh, about the resurrection. Jesus had foretold it, but they hadn't experienced it yet. And these disciples were people like Peter and Andrew who had left their fishing business, left everything they've known to follow Jesus. Uh, he was the long-awaited Messiah. And so it was worthwhile for them to put their old lives behind them and just cast their whole life in with him. And then he was executed on a cross like a common criminal. And so they must have been having some second thoughts and some sadness about losing a friend um, it just must have been a very difficult time. These were unexpected events, and they were traumatic for the disciples. Uh, they had this profound loss of their leader and friend, and they were alarmed. They didn't know what was next, and they were afraid that they might suffer the same fate. So that's what's going on in that very first verse. And then the disciples are standing there, and it says, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, peace be with you. So Jesus somehow appears behind a locked door to the disciples, and he speaks to them, he says, peace be with you. And that's a fairly common 
uh, greeting uh, in the ancient Near East uh, for Jews to greet each other. Uh, but I think having it come from Jesus after he had been resurrected, it, it had a new, uh, new meaning, uh, new depth to it. Uh, he's not just saying hello, like we would say hello when we see someone. He was saying, peace be with you. That there's this overwhelming, I think, sense of harmony, tranquility, uh, what the Jewish language calls shalom, this over sense, uh, overwhelming sense of well-being uh, that Jesus is wishing to his disciples. And then as he said that, uh, he's wishing them peace, and he shows them his wounds, right? He says that, look at my hands, my side. Um, they can see this visible, tangible evidence uh, of his death, but he's not dead. This wasn't a dream. He, he's not a ghost. Jesus is alive, and Jesus had come to them at their lowest point, and in their time of greatest need, Jesus showed up. Uh, he showed up when they needed him most, and I think that's something that's very important for us to know, that, that God shows up when we need him most. And then it says, for they, they were frightened, but after they say Jesus, after they see Jesus, and he shows them his hands and his side, says they were glad. And I, I think it was more than just a sense of happiness. I think there were, was this deep joy. They were overjoyed that their Lord and Master, the one that they had followed, the one they had put their hope and trust in, returned. And so there was this great joy. Um, Jesus showed up at their lowest point, at their darkest point, and he brought peace and light into their darkness. He brought joy into their sadness. Uh, it's just this profound and amazing moment. And then again, Jesus repeats himself. He says, peace be with you. Uh, and I think the reason that Jesus does this is he wants them to be equipped when he gives them the next phrase, when he says, uh, just as the Father sent me, I'm sending you. He gives them this mission. Uh, he wants the disciples to go out and mimic the works that he's done, which is a ministry of healing, of reconciliation, of transformation, of rescue, uh, Jesus, that was his mission, and then he is giving that mission to the disciples. And by uh, extension to us, the mission of Jesus is our mission. And he's saying, just as the Father sent Jesus into the world, Jesus is sending us into the world. And then in verse 22, this is where, where I sort of heard something new. It said, Jesus breathed on them and received the, said, receive the Holy Spirit. Uh, the Greek word translated receive can also mean catch, uh, like catch the Holy Spirit. And it struck me sort of as funny, right? In the days of COVID-19, we really don't want anyone breathing on us. And we're wearing our masks, so we don't breathe on anyone else. Because we don't want to catch the disease. And we don't want to transmit the disease. But Jesus is breathing on them and saying, catch the Holy Spirit. He's giving them this visual of what I have, I can give to you, and it's going to make all the difference, uh, the Holy Spirit. So that really sort of was a new way for me to think about that. And as he breathed on them uh, <clears throat> to receive the Holy Spirit, they received the Holy Spirit by breathing him in. And then we get throughout the Gospel of John and the other uh, books of the New Testament, we, sit, we hear that the Holy Spirit, as Bruce prayed, resides within us. Uh, that we're not alone, like the disciples felt alone in that upper room before Jesus showed up. We have the Holy Spirit with us each and every moment of every day. And uh, the Holy Spirit can guide us and equip us for this mission of reconciliation and comfort and caring for the people in the world. And then the, verse, or the chapter closes with Jesus saying, If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. And so I think an important aspect of the ministry that Jesus has given us as his disciples is this ministry of forgiveness. Um, I'm not quite sure what it means to withhold forgiveness, or in what case that might be appropriate. Um, but the first part, that we need to be forgiving people, uh, that Spirit helps us to be forgiving, um, I think, and the Spirit can help us discern uh, who we need to forgive or when we need to ask for forgiveness. And I am wholly convinced that 
followers of Christ are forgiving people, uh, and we should always err on the side of offering forgiveness rather than withholding it. That's sort of just my perspective on that verse. And so as I was thinking about this, like, what's next? What, how do we apply this? Like, what's to take home from this? There, and I thought the best way to put it is with some questions. Um, it'd be wise for us to consider how would we respond to these questions in light of this story? And so the first question I'd like us to ask ourselves is, what am I afraid of? Uh, in this time of COVID-19, what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of catching the disease? Am I afraid of getting a vaccine? Am I afraid of losing people close to me? There's so many things that we can be afraid of in this time. Um, and then the question that goes with that, once you answer, what am I afraid of, is the question, how can the Holy Spirit help me overcome this fear? To not be stuck with whatever that fear is on my own, but to involve God through the Holy Spirit in helping me to answer that question. So that's the first one. What am I afraid of and how can the Holy Spirit help me overcome this fear? The second is where in my life do I need God's joy and peace? Right? The disciples, they, were, they needed some joy and they needed some peace in that upper room. And we need joy and peace too. There are times, uh, certainly in my life, when I look at the glass as half empty, I'm pessimistic, I'm negative about what's going on. And I need some joy. I need some peace. And the corollary question to that is, how can the Holy Spirit grant me this deep joy and this abiding peace that I seek? So ask, where do you need it? Where, where can I find it? And you can find it through the Holy Spirit. Uh, thirdly, this is my last question, is who does God want me to forgive? Who does God want me to forgive? And then, again, how can the Holy Spirit help me to forgive this person? And... If you've been around Bruce and I, we often say that the hardest person to forgive is ourselves. We, uh, I'm hard on myself, and, um, and maybe Bruce is too in Austin, but we need to forgive ourselves as well. But so ask that question, God, who do you want me to forgive? Is there a person uh, in my family, a friend? Is there something I need to let go of for myself? And ask the Spirit to help you to forgive. So my prayer is that for each of us would take some time alone with God, with this passage maybe, with these questions, and to sort of reflect on what God would have us to do um, to consider uh, how we can answer these questions and how we can uh, grow closer with him, have our fears relieved, grow in peace, and forgive one another. Amen. Mm. Thank you, Mark. Um, I would just add a couple of thoughts. One, I, I think it is so significant as you've, as you've uh, voiced that the first words out of Jesus' mouth after the resurrection are peace be with you. And uh, as you say, it was a common phrase during, the, during that time, but this takes it to a whole new level. And not only does he say it once, he says it three times in that John section, yeah. peace be with you. And the second, the, the uh, next words out of his mouth again are peace be with you. So this is a really important concept. And so God is so intends us to live with a sense of peace. And I, I just gently say that um, our culture um, I went home for lunch today. We, 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 um, we videotape these about 1.30. Um, and uh, I went home for lunch at, at noontime. And there's a big snowstorm coming. And my wife was watching the, 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 um, the weather channel to see, you know. And, and uh, I think the people downstate in New York are going to get a couple feet. Pops up, we'll probably get seven or eight inches, whatever. But um, Sarah, finally, we were sitting down to have lunch together. And uh, she said, I want to turn this off. They're so dramatic. You know, they're so sort of dramatic. And so the reason I mention that is, is that like our culture keeps sort of wanting us not to be too peaceful. We, we, we you know, show you drama, show you something you need to buy, <clears throat> something you need, something you're not quite good at, something you're not quite adequate at. Um, and so we're, we're kind of given this subtle message of, don't get too peaceful. Just be a little off, and then you'll need to buy lots of stuff, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. And yeah. so 
I think these words from they're some of my one of my one of my favorite scriptures. You pick one of my favorite scriptures. Peace be with you. And and not only that, but the the, the exegesis you did on it, I thought was so thoughtful. The word shalom, you know, coming out of the Jewish faith, um, you know, being translated as uh, overall. Um, uh, overall sense of well-being, an overall sense of well-being. That's what God wants for us. Yeah. This overall sense of well-being, and God intends that for us. And I think if Silver Bay were about, if you were, it's impossible to do this. But if if Silver Bay was about one thing, it might be about that everybody who finds their way here comes away hopefully with an overall sense of well-being. Mm -hmm knowing that they're loved by a God. So anyway, I don't mean to go on, but you've really tapped into a really, I think, important verse there and uh, an important message, and I just wanted to uh, share a couple thoughts about it that way. And, and, you know, I know I speak for Garth and I. Peace be with you. That's, yeah. that's we hope peace is with you in the midst of all that's going on. So yeah. thank you. Yeah, let's pray, and then we can sing. Sure. sure. Gracious God, we do thank you that uh, your first and last words to us are peace, uh, that you desire us to have uh, a peaceful sense of our lives and our place in the world and uh, the hope that you have for us, that we would be at peace with that. And so help us to uh, live into that, to embrace that. Uh, and we pray for those who uh, are watching, uh, that you would fill them with your peace, uh, that they would uh, be hopeful uh, in the midst of whatever challenges they're facing uh, and we're facing. Uh, we're in this together, as um, we've said before, we're not alone. Uh, your spirit is with us and within us to guide us, to comfort us, and so help us to tap into the spirit's reserves and strength that he can give us and Lord help us to be uh, a forgiving people um, Bruce talked about our culture and I think that's one of the things in our culture we're so uh, divided right now um, and so to uh, work to heal uh, by forgiving uh, it's okay to see things differently uh, but to forgive one another as uh, fellow uh, Americans, as fellow citizens of the world, as brothers and sisters uh, that, that share this common humanity, help us to be a forgiving people. Uh, Lord, we love you. Uh, help us to uh, not just have that be words, but to put it to, to action, to demonstrate our love uh, towards you by the way that we worship, and demonstrate our love to each other by the way that we share what we have, by the words that we speak, uh, by the way that we treat one another. Uh, Lord, uh, thank you for your word and its power to just show us things that we may need to hear again or see again or see in a totally new light. Uh, we're grateful for your word and for your son and for your spirit. Uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as we always do, we'll sing this beautiful uh, song surely the presence and then we'll uh, we'll do another one too that uh, that hopefully you'll know <clears throat> I see glory on each face, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place, I can feel His mighty I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on these beds. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Goodbye.
we do another song? Yeah, that'd be great. So, a beautiful little song, Gift of Love. I think it so goes beautifully with uh, Garth's message about peace be with you. And uh, it, it goes like this. Though I may speak with greatest fire And have the gift to all inspire And have not loved, my words are being A sounding word and hopeless gift. benediction. Uh, Tomorrow a new day will dawn. Despite what we see and hear in the world around us, the sun will rise. When it comes, it will break through the darkness of our world, darkness caused by violence and death, corruption and despair. And all those who now sit huddled in the shadows will be able to rise and walk with confidence in God's light. May we endure and press onward with courage and hope to love and serve the Lord, that all may know our Savior and rejoice. We pray this in the name of our God, the Creator, of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and of the Holy Spirit, our breath of life. Go in peace, and may each of you find safety and rest this week. Amen. Amen. So we close with this uh, beautiful little song, God be with you till we meet again. Thank you all for being with us. Um, again, these devotionals are posted each week uh, at noontime on Wednesday on Facebook and on our YouTube channel. Uh, you can access them at any time, uh, but that's when they air if you want to watch them uh, with others. Uh, thank you again for uh, being with us. We do pray that you will be filled with the Spirit this week and that you'll know God's peace. Uh, thank you for being with us. Yeah, it's such a joy to be with you, and um, we just hope, and I know I speak for Garth and Austin and our staff at Silver Bay, that uh, wherever you are, that you know the peace of the Lord and the peace of God that comes with, with our faith. How grateful we are to be in connection and relationship around that. How grateful we are to be part of this community, and we look forward to being together again here at some point. God bless. Take care. Bye now. Bye.